Hi, I'm Jilly Bean Fitzhenry. Welcome to another one of my painting videos. Today I'm going to show you how I did my flamingo. And I've used stylized flowers for the body instead of feathers. But I love, love, love these colors. And I've done it on a clay flower pot as well as a canvas. So I'm going to talk about how you prepare both surfaces. And you're using the same paint and same techniques for both. Of course, I'm using my favorite paints, my DecoArt Americana and Traditions. Also, my favorite brushes, the uh, Dynasty Black Gold and the Black Silver for the Rake Brush, uh, as well as the Dynasty Stencil Pro. So I'm going to give you some easy tips on how to stencil successfully. So let's get started. I'm first going to show you how I prepared the surfaces. Whether you would like to paint this design on a canvas or a clay flower pot, uh, the preparation is kind of similar. So let's start with the clay flower pot. Okay, now uh, I have um, just the a bottom of the clay flower pot that I'm going to show you. And to start with, if you have any rough edges at all on this, you may want to take some sandpaper and lightly get rid of any of those rough areas. Okay. Otherwise, what I like to do is I like to start with a gesso. Now, DecoArt Chalky Gesso is really nice. Uh, it's a little bit thicker, so you can use less coats when you're putting this on. I did put two coats on both the canvas and on the flower pot just to be on the safe side. So I've poured the Chalky Gesso into a little uh, container here. And then I'm gonna start with my Dynasty Blue Ice. Uh, brush and this is a two inch brush. Love these brushes. Okay, but see how nice and thick that gesso is. So I'm, I'm going to get a really good coverage. Now when I'm putting this on the canvas, this is also going to help fill in all of the little crevices. Um, but on the flower pot, I really want to make sure that I'm covering the color of the clay flower pot because the basic color on the background is going to be white. So the gesso really helps me get a good start. And you'll see that with the blue ice, I really can get a lot on in a short period of time. So uh, when I first put it on, I may be putting down a lot of pressure and then when I go to smooth out the strokes, just very, very light pressure. The brush, uh, the bristles are stiff, however the very tips are so fine that if you just barely use any pressure it's going to smooth out any of your brush marks. So when you're doing the flower pot, you're going to want to do every bit of it. So I think you kind of get the idea of the base coating here. All right, so let me talk about the main part of the flower pot here. Okay, you want to do down inside as well as the bottom, every single bit of this flower pot. If you're going to use this for real flowers and put dirt in here, you're going to want to seal this very, very well, and that's going to start to finish. Um, so I have base coated this with two coats of the gesso. Then I actually also base coated with just a white acrylic. Um, I use the uh, Traditions but you could use the Americana. Uh, another thing that you could use would be the uh, curb appeal that Deco has for outdoor paint. Um, I am going to spray seal this uh, at the very end. So uh, to start with, I've got my white paint here, and I'm going to show you how I... Let's see, we turn it upside down to start with. I'm going to get this one out of the way so I don't mess it up. But I'm going to start with, uh, I like the Traditions paint because that also has a nice coverage. So I'm going to get some of that out. And I'm going to be showing you how I do a kind of a modeled background. 
pull this in view a little more. Now, I do need to clean this brush good, but I need to take it over to my sink. So I'm just going to put it in water for now. And then I am going to be using a um, Dynasty Faux Squirrel brush, three quarter inch. Uh, would be a good size to use for the modeling that we're going to be doing on this. So for the colors, I'm going to be using uh, Cactus Flower. And get a little bit of that out. And then I also want a little bit of Royal Fuchsia. And this is Americana. And also a little bit of coral. Okay. All right, so to begin with, um, I'm going to, I base coated the whole thing with white, okay? So let's get a good angle here, maybe like that, okay? So I am gonna put, I wet my brush in some water and I am gonna put, um, some more white on here just because I want to be able to blend on a wet surface so mine was already dry and I want to be able to blend in the bottom half of that so I'm just going to show you a portion of this get that on there really well just a quick little coat so whenever you do your last coat of white you'll be ready to go ahead and put your mottled colors on here. So now, I'm not gonna um, clean the brush. I'm gonna use it dirty. And I'm gonna pick up some of the cactus flower, and I'm gonna put that across the very bottom of the flower pot. I'm gonna start by getting a fairly good coverage down there. And I don't want a smooth edge where I come into the white area. I want that to be messy. So don't make a nice clean edge or you'll have a ridge. So make that nice and solid. Now I did about three fingers up. So let me go a little bit higher. I want that to come up a little bit more. All right, okay, now where I left off between the white and the cactus flower color, uh, I'm gonna still just use my dirty brush. And now I'm gonna start right on the edge and I'm gonna do like a slip slap. Think of the letter X. And light, light touch. And I wanna get those to start to blend and then if I have a lot of excess I'll wipe it off on my towel pick up more white come in some more slip slap wipe the extra off and I really want to get that just to kind of fade into my white in the upper half of the flower pot. Now, if you had too much of your coral on there, uh, if you needed to clean your brush, you sure could, and then come back with some more of the white. Okay, now, I'm going to um, wipe that off. I can still keep using my dirty brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the Royal Fuchsia. Okay, but very, very sparse. And now I want to get some of that in the bottom here also. Very light touch. Light, light touch. If your paint feels dry, you can add just a little tiny drop of water. I think I am going to do that, but then I'm going to blot it on my towel because I don't want it too wet. And you just have to decide when the color is um, the, what you want it to be. Okay, so a little bit more. And then I'm also going to add just a little tiny bit of 
the coral color in there as well. If you get too carried away with any one color, you can always go back and add a little bit of the white in there. You know, you can always go back and forth with these colors. Okay, and then you probably want to go ahead and base coat that whole bottom with the cactus flower so that it'll all blend in to the rest of your flower pot. Get that nice and good. Okay, now, so that's basically it for getting the mottled look around the bottom. In the um, bottom of the tray, I painted it with the cactus. So I just base coated the cactus flower color in the bottom of the tray. And then I did black on the rest of it, so the underside. But this way, when you set your flower pot down in, it's going to look like it's reflecting up into your mottled color. So I kind of like that. Okay, now for camera purposes, I really do need to work on a canvas rather than the round surface so that you can see my design better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this 9 by 12 canvas. I've already base coated it with the chalky gesso and now I'm going to go ahead and get my color on the bottom half and this uh, design you're going to see afterwards. Here's my pattern. See I can put that in there as well so anywhere I want to put it. So depending on the size canvas you're working on kind of determine where you want your your um, pattern to be and I'm probably going to go a little bit higher so probably about four fingers up from the bottom with my color so that it'll really show up nicely. So I'll start with the cactus flower down at the bottom here and get that on really good. And this is just a canvas board for demoing purposes. My finished one I did was a 12 by 12. And you can certainly enlarge or reduce the pattern to make it fit different things. So, you get that to go up. Just work kind of quickly. Okay, and then I'm going to pick up some white on my dirty brush and go ahead and get that across there too. Okay, and then I'll start. I want to do that kind of mottled look, so kind of like a little X where I've got those colors transitioning. So it's not just a harsh line. Then I'll pick up a little bit of the darker pink, the royal fuchsia. You know, and you certainly can substitute whatever colors you have available. I'm just using corals and pinks and so use your favorite colors. Don't be afraid to kind of think outside the box a little bit. You want it to be colors that you like. So I'm just creating that kind of a little X. And you want to be working wet on wet. Just slip slap that in, pick up a little coral. And I'm just using my dirty brush. I'm not rinsing the colors off in between. And whenever you like it, you just go ahead and stop. So I kind of like what I've got right there. So that's my, my bottom of my piece. So now I'm going to let that dry before I put the pattern on. While I let this dry, let me show you how I did the stencil around the top of the flower pot. Okay, so I used a three-quarter inch um, plaid uh, on it. Now, 
You could also use a uh, half inch plaid. It just depends on how big you would like those checks to be. Also depends on the size flower pot that you have. I believe this is an eight inch flower pot that I'm working on. So uh, either one would work. There's lots of them out there. Uh, the blue one was a M2 squared by Sandy McTeer and Tracy Moreau. And then the three-quarter um, is a jelly bean stencil, but there's also um, Cupboard Distributing has three-quarter inch uh, plaid stencils as well. So uh, lots of them out there to pick from. Now for this, I'm going to see if I can get my flower pot to keep from rolling on me. Let's see if I can balance it. Okay, on the stencil and I'm just going to go ahead and use a dirty one that I've got here. So on the stencil because of the curve of the pot if I lay the whole thing down it's going to start curving up off the edge so I can only do about three at a time and then I move it or shift it. So kind of balance it into the area that you want it to be. Um, have a little tape to help hold it in place a little better. Let's get that. So I'm only going to worry about, th about three of them. Now my edge of my flower pot, um, I have a little bit of space above and below where my plaid stencil is. Just a little hairline space, but they'll be similar to the same size. So I'm going to go ahead and tape that down. But I'm only going to get those middle ones. All right. Now I'm going to use black paint. So I've got the DecoArt um, Lamp Black. Put that out. Okay, then. I love, love, love the Dynasty Stencil Pro brushes. These are a synthetic, synthetic um, bristle, and they are a little stiffer than the natural um, hair um, stencils. And what I love about it is they cling together better, and so you have less chance of the bristles slipping under your pattern, which is fantastic. Now, another little trick um, is you've got to use it really dry. So I start by really kind of loading up the brush, really plump it up with lots of paint. But then you want to wipe every bit of it out or pinch it out, okay, so that it's very dry. You know, and maybe even do a little test on the tips. And I'm just going to pick about three of the squares here. Very light touch little circular motion. No pressure. Don't put me down. You can kind of go different directions. And I'm going to go ahead and just do about three of the squares. I think I can get that fourth one too. A little goes a long way. All right, let's take a peek, see how that came out. And there we go. So you have a nice crisp edge on there. Now on this particular one, after I got all this done, and I would just keep lining it up again. So I would just go ahead and line up, you know, a plaid, and then just keep going all the way around the pot, okay? But once I got it done, I'll have white spaces. Now you can either leave that or if you decide you would like to maybe have that be black, go ahead and reposition one more time and go ahead and get those black. So sometimes just depending on the piece that you're working on. Let's get that to stay on there. Tape it down. So I'm just going to go ahead and I can go back in between and then I can create the black squares every other one instead of having a white one in there. 
Let's get one more in there. Now, as far as the size of the stencil, uh, either a half inch or a five eighths inch would be a good size uh, for working on this piece. Okay, then uh, another thing I want to show you is when you're working on the flower pot, uh, this top edge. Okay, now the inside of my flower pot is, is all white. Maybe you want to make it black, it doesn't matter. Um, whatever seems easiest. Okay, so now in order to get this top edge here with paint, what I do is I use my finger and I take and I dip my finger into the black paint, get the extra off on the palette there. And without applying pressure, I just use that to skim around the edge of the flower pot and it's a little bit more accurate than doing um, a brush because you have a tendency to, you know, let the brush go up and down as you're pulling it. So just a little trick to get your edges on your flower pots a little bit easier. Just keep reloading your finger but let me tip that forward. So now when you look at that, see I get a nice clean edge around there just with my finger. Okay? Okay, so the canvas that I prepared is all dry and then I have traced my pattern on um, with graphite paper and a stylus. Now I have my pattern on uh, some tracing paper or vellum so that if I accidentally moved it I'd be able to replace it and be able to see through to reposition it again. I've made my graphite lines really dark on here so that you can see it on the camera but if you're doing this yourself at home I would make them as pale as you possibly can so if they get this dark take uh, like a little white eraser, eraser and go ahead and make them paler uh, to begin with so that you won't have so much trouble covering up all this. But I want you to be able to see where I'm at so I'll go ahead and be able to touch mine up later. Okay, now in the pattern packet that goes along with this video, uh, it is available on my website and you get some really good step-by-step -step color photos and uh, to start with. So here you'll see that base coat at the bottom of the area and then we do our slip slap with the white and the cactus flower then add your other colors in there. But the very first step is just to do some uh, base coating in some of the areas on the flamingo. So that's what I'm going to start with now. I'm using the black gold for my brushes. So I want like a 3 8 inch angle. I want a small liner brush like a 10 aught, 20 aught and about a number two round. Later I will be putting on feathers with the black silver rake brush and you can either use the one quarter inch or I will even show you if you want it even smaller how to trim it down and make yourself a one eighth inch brush as well. Okay. Uh, so I just want to start by filling in the areas and for on the flamingo I'm going to use the cactus flower and a little round brush. I don't mind if I have brush marks um, but I want them going in the direction that the feathers would be. So I'm just kind of stroking in. If I have a huge ridge you know I'll soften it but I don't mind seeing brush marks. And I should be able to do this in one coat if I use my paint thick enough. I'm going to get that neck to just kind of blend right in to my flower area. So pull the length of the head or the neck. And I'm using the paint uh, right from the bottle. I'm not thinning it because I want a good coverage. 
And this uh, exact same technique, whether you're doing the clay flower pot or a canvas. So just pull. Don't mind little brush marks. I would rather use a round brush and have little stroke marks than use a flat brush because um, I get a little bit more dimension by having those strokes underneath all of my detail. So I'll just pull in the direction. And I could have used a larger brush, but I purposely want those brush marks, so that's why I'm only using a number two. Let's try and get all that area and I'm going to have right up next to the eye there. If you accidentally go into the eye, we put white down again because the eye color is going to be a transparent color and we'll need to fill that in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and also, while I'm at it, get the this same color, the cactus flower, in my rose. And there again, I'm kind of pulling the strokes in the direction of the petals. And if I put it on thick enough, I only need one coat. Just don't want huge ridges, a little bit of brush marks so are okay as long as they're in the direction that the petals are growing or unfolding. And this is just stylized little roses that were doing for the body of the flamingo. I love flamingos. They are such gorgeous birds. And I'm from Minnesota and we have a Minnesota zoo that has a indoor tropical trail. And there are flamingos in there and I just love standing and watching them. And they're just such elegant birds. There, so now I've got those colors in there and I'm going to let that dry and I just rinse my brush in water in between colors. Um, the next thing I think I'll do is go ahead and get the coral in the beak. And I took a little bit of liberty with some of the colors, a little artistic license on some of the colors in the beak. They don't necessarily have purple in their beak, but I'm going to put some in after anyway. It's prettier than gray. Let's see, I think I'll go, yeah, I'll go all the way to the line to start with, that center line, filling that in. So that's coral. And then uh, I'm on a white surface, and if I, this is white, on the beak here, but if I start with white, I can't get any kind of dimension, so I'm going to go ahead and use buttermilk. And these are Americana colors I'm using. So I'll get buttermilk on the top half and a little bit above the coral there next to the face, and just kind of chop in, because I'm going to have that lavender in there afterwards. Rinse my brush. Okay, now the color is actually called Lilac Meadow. It's a beautiful purple lavender color. And I'm going to put some above the eye. And then pull little, kind of like little strokes so I don't have a solid line in the top half there and then go ahead and pull it across the top edge of the beak and a little bit next to the eye and just kind of tap in where the head and the beak kind of touch. Okay, um, I'll be putting a lavender line to help separate the bottom half of the beak after two. Okay, so I want black in the bottom of the beak. And I want it a little bit choppy right there where those two colors meet. Just fill it in, still just using my 
number two black gold brush get the bottom half and at this point if you go outside the lines you can try and touch up with a, a white background or whatever color background that you have. Don't worry about the neck though because we're going to be making that look feathery so that's not quite as important to have have it nice and smooth. Okay then I'm going to switch to my liner brush and go ahead and get it wet and thin the black just a little bit and I want to create that center line in the top half of the beak and then in the bottom half, it needs to be the lavender because obviously the black isn't going to show up. And I just thought lavender would be prettier than having it white. So divide that in half. Light, light touch when you're doing that. Inside of the eye, I'm going to make that uh, citron green. It's a really pretty green. It's just a yellow green. So if you have trouble finding this color, uh, start with some yellow, tint it with a little bit of green. But this is a really pretty bright yellowy green. I'll get that filled in and I'm going to let that dry before I try to put in my pupil. So I'll let that dry, and I'm going to let it dry before I outline around it with my black as well. Okay, so while I'm waiting for that, let me go ahead and fill in this other rose. The other rose here I'm going to do with coral color, so that they're both just a little bit different. There again, pull in the direction of the petals. So if you have brush marks or or any kind of a little ridge at least they're in the right direction and these are just little stylized roses just kind of fun quick little roses to do get that all filled in the little bottom petals there All right. Okay, now before I do any of my leaves, I'm going to uh, definitely have to finish my whole flamingo because they're going to go on top of the neck in the, those areas. So I've got to let that dry just a little bit. Okay, so while my face area is drying, I can go ahead and start my shadow color on the neck of my flamingo here. So you'll see I've got some at the top of the head here where it touches the beak. I'm going to go around the eye, above the eye, and create kind of, I'm going to create like a little bump. There's like this, oh, bump on the top half of the head there. A um, little bit more towards the beak here, thin it down. I'm going to get under the neck and then stop and then flip to the other side and do the back half and against the flowers. Okay, so for that, I'm going to use my angle brush uh, to start with, and then I can feather the uh, feathers out from it afterwards, but I want to get a nice um, color to begin with. So I'm just going to use water. Now, a lot of times in a lot of my other videos that I do in projects. I use a uh, extender blending medium and you certainly could use that on this as well. Um, I chose just to do water this time just to show you that this one can be done just with water if you need to. So the angle brush I'm going to corner load the long tip. I dip it right into the middle of the um, pile of paint and I've got that on the long corner. Now when I blend it on my palette I just want to kind of wipe off the excess on both directions but be careful you don't want that short corner to get any color on it. Okay so let's start at the top of the head here and I'm going to I want a nice generous amount of color 
right up against the beak. Get a little bit more on, wipe off the excess. I want to go around the eye. Try not to touch my white, uh, my green area because it's still wet. And I use the short end of the brush that's clean to kind of tap or blend the excess. You also could use a um, blender brush to do this, or you could use another clean brush just to help blend it a little bit more. But I'll lift up on that short corner and use that for blending. Okay, so I want it a little bit thicker right at the base there, and then I'm going to taper it under the cheek area. Okay, flip my brush. I'm going to come up into the curve of the neck here. And I want to get that nice and bold. And then taper it so it kind of disappears. Then I'll flip to the back side, and I need to turn it upside down in order to get the right angle. Anytime your brush gets dirty or the color gets onto the short end, stop and rinse it in water and start with a fresh load. But if you're careful, you can go quite a ways before you have to do that. Now I'm just going to kind of tap it in next to the flower there. And then go ahead, pull up the back side of the neck. Reload as often as you need to. Okay, now, here's what's happening. Take a look at my brush. Okay, my brush is kind of splitting apart at the tips there. And what that means is my brush is thirsty. So all the water that I had at the top of the brush has now drained down, and then the bristles have a tendency to, to start to splay apart. Stop, rinse your brush. Okay, you need a fresh load. See, they all come back together again once you wet it in the water. Blot it on my towel, get a fresh load, dip the corner in, and then I'm good to go again. So nothing wrong with your brush, it was just thirsty. And I'll taper that up right at the top of the head there. Okay, so now I've got my first shading on the neck and the head. Okay, then quarter I'm inch. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wet that. And I'm going to use the same color. Okay. Yeah, I got a little too much water on there. Okay, now think about the direction that the feathers are growing. They're coming up from the head and they're going to come down and around the neck. Okay, so I just want to pull a few little lines out of this color from the areas that I shaded just to start the feathery effect. Come down and it's not a lot. You don't see a lot at this stage, but just a little bit. Just kind of transitioning it, the color, into the center of the neck. When I put the other colors in, some of this is going to disappear. So if you're a little too generous, don't worry. It's going to um, be rectified when you go ahead and use the other colors. Okay, then the next step I'm going to do is to get uh, some white highlights in here. Okay. So the um, center of the beak here, I want to have some white in there. I honestly think that you could probably just moisten that with a little bit of water, okay, and use your liner brush. And I'm going to use the titanium white. And right in the center of the beak here, I want nice solid white. I still want to see some of the buttermilk and then just pull little feathery lines so that it doesn't look like it's quite such a chunk of an area. Okay, I also want um, white in the top of the head and in the cheek. 
uh, for that, I'm going to go back to my rake brush though. Um, you, depending on your area, you may or may not have to moisten it. I'm just going to use water. Just make sure that your other, my other pink was dry. So just make sure that it's dry. Okay, now, if this feels too awkward using the quarter inch, I could trim it. Or I could just use a little bit on the corner, get some white on there, wipe the extra off. And right in the top center of the head here, just very lightly pull. And I'm going to pull, kind of pull in both directions. So I want it kind of solid in that center and then pull little feathery strokes out from there. A little bit more. Now sometimes you might have to do a second coat. First coat might be a little too transparent. Once it dries, sometimes it kind of disappears. I also want to get the center of the cheek here. So I want it more solid in the center and then a light, light touch. Just pull out little feathery lines to help that kind of blend in. Okay, then let's see. Those are my brightest areas. Um, then the rest, I think I'll wait and do the other color. Let's go back to the eye and the beak. Okay, let's take a closer look now to do the eye and the beak details. In the center of the eye, I want a black pupil, so I can actually take the wooden end of my brush, dip it in black, and then set it down in the middle of the eye. Now I gotta tell you, these birds Actually, their real eye is very tiny and the black would never be that big. It's very beady. So I'm taking a little bit of artistic license here um, and giving it a little bit uh, fancier, a little more glamorous eye, I guess. I'm going to add some white into my black to get, so I can get a thinner line now. About half and half when you do liner work. And I'm going to get a line going around the eye with the black. And I have to tell you, sometimes when I'm on camera, I've got my piece at an angle so the camera can see it, but then I can't see it. So um, I'm not afraid to go back and touch up. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to add more green because I came in a little bit too far with my black and I want to clean that up a little bit. Okay, let that dry. Okay, in the beak area, I want to soften this edge of where I stopped with the purple. So I'm going to come back with a little bit of buttermilk and I'm just going to kind of pull some little strokes in on top of the purple with the liner brush and that'll just soften down that edge that I left off with. Get that to blend in a little bit more. Um, above the black line here I do want to add a purple line above there. Watered it down a little bit, a little bit more transparent. Fill that in. And then the, um, let's see, what do I want to do? I want to do a little bit in the beak as well, but I'm going to add I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my I'm going to switch to my round brush here, and I'm going to get some of that lilac color, lilac meadow, and watered it down a little bit. And I'm just going to put a little stroke for a highlight in the black. Now, if it gets to be too bold, 
you can always, you can blot it or you can put a little wash of black over it afterwards. But I want a little bit both in the top and bottom of that beak. Just a nice little lavender highlight in there. Okay, then in the rest of the beak, I'm going to add a little bit of white above and below that center line on the top half. So I've still got my little round brush. If you need to switch to the liner, you sure could. But a little white stroke above and below. There's actually a little ridge there. And I'm going to go divide that lavender in half with the white. Go above and just get it to kind of transition lightly into where I left off in the other part of the beak. And I might need to make it just a little bolder. A little bit, little bit heavier at that top area. Okay. And just going to touch up my center line. And get that to come down in. All right, on the rest of the eye now, I'm gonna use a darker green up in the top and I have got leaf green that I'm gonna use. I'll be using that color in the leaves as well. And I want to put that just in this little top area here. So I'll use my round brush. And I'm just going to kind of dab that in. Just kind of tap it in, that upper half, for a little bit of a shadow. Okay, and then in the bottom half, I want to tap in a little bit of white for a highlight. And then I also want to add a white highlight kind of in the pupil here. So I'll just tap in a little bit of white half on the pupil and half on the green. It can be a circle, it can be a square. It's just light reflecting into the eye itself. Okay, the eyelashes are black. And you would not see these eyelashes on a real flamingo, but I love eyelashes on everything. So just little black lines, a little bit of a curve, make her a little, little more glamorous. And there she is. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to do the other colors on her neck. Um, now, I told you I was going to show you how to do this um, smaller brush here. Let's see. If I had, let me see if I find a little scissors. There we go. Okay, so if you're working on smaller pieces or ornaments, um, what I do is I take a scissors and I nip it off right at the ferrule. And I do it on each side. And till it's the size that I want it to be, okay? So very easy um, to make your own little smaller brush if you need it. Okay, now the other colors that are in the neck here, I wanna do a lighter color um, with cactus and white, mix those two together. And probably half and half is a good recipe. And I'm gonna okay. have the excess off. Now, I down in the neck here, I want to get some little feathery lines. I'm not trying to totally cover up what's underneath. I still want to be, see, be able to see my original color. All I'm trying to do is add some little feather lines, light, light touch. And this will be in all the areas where I had the cactus flower color that I base coated with. And if you get too much or too carried away, you can always come back over and add some more cactus flower on top, or if it happened to be in 
the shadow area, you can always add some more of that color in as well. But just light, light strokes. It doesn't take much. They're just such beautiful, elegant birds. They're, you know, their feathers are very smooth. And just a little more here. And very, very light. Now, you could also take your finger and blot it if you see that you right away that you've got too much. That's another little trick that you could use. But sometimes as it dries, it gets softer anyway. Okay, then I just have to decide if I want a little bit of um, another tinted color in there, which I do. I love that coral color. So I'm going to take a little bit of coral and just kind of tint it here and there wherever I want. Um, I can put it where I'm trying to break up, you know, the two colors. Just want to get a little bit of variation of color throughout. I'm just going to kind of blot that with my finger. Okay. And I think I will leave it alone. So, pretty quick to do the flamingo. Okay, let's do the flowers next. On the flowers. Oh, I should tell you that if you do want... Now, if you do want a little bit more feathery on the outside here, you sure can. Honestly, these birds are nice and smooth and soft, but sometimes I do just like a little teeny bit of a feathery look, so I may, let me flip it upside down here. I may go back and just add, you know, whatever color is on that edge and just kind of break up that edge and make it a little bit feathery. Little feathery. <laughs> Just barely catch. And you could use a liner brush to do this as well. Just kind of adds to the stylized look, I think. And also, if you had graphite lines, it'd be a way to help kind of cover up the graphite lines. Okay, now, what happens if you got it too thick or you made the neck too thick? Whatever your background color is, and mine is white, I can come back and I could go the opposite way and I can thin out the neck by coming back with little white featheries along the edge coming from the background so I could reshape my neck that way. So you always have a little options to uh, clean things up. And I always like to look at mine for a day and then go back and, you know, do little touch-ups here and there. Okay, so let's go to the roses. Now on the roses, when you're working on those, you're basically, you're starting with um, the base or the body of the rose you've got an inside and then you've got outer petals. So we already base coated so the next step will be to do some shading and I'm using the same color for both flowers so just made it easy. So the Royal Fuchsia is what I'm going to use and I'm going to use my angle brush and I'm going to do the corner load. Now if you feel you need to moisten with a little water go ahead just don't get it too wet. You don't want, in fact I'm going to blot that just a little bit. I don't want mine to be too wet. Okay, so I'm going to do a corner load of the Royal Fuchsia. Blend the extra off. And I want to get that down in the base of the rose there in the inside. I want that to be nice and bold. A little bit more yet. Nice and bold down there. Lots of contrast. Then in the body of the rose, 
I'm going to do just one side. So I'm going to come along this side and taper it in the bottom. All right, then I want to get some in the um, inside edges of the petals where they're attaching to the body of the rose. Still a corner low, the color is pointing towards the body. And this time try to make it a little bit more roughly. Um, you don't want it uh, in the middle of the petal if you can make it a little rougher looking. When I go against the body, that can be, but let's kind of break up or ruffle up where it's coming inside the petal itself. So smooth against the body but a little more roughly in the petal itself. So I, a lot of times I kind of do like little short kind of pouncy strokes rather than a typical float. That way I can get a little bit more ruffles in the petal. And I'll do the same on the other side. So just kind of dabbing that corner in there so that I'll have a little bit more of a ruffled look in the petal. If you get too much water, blot your brush off. It's always a little tricky just to get that perfect combination of paint and water. So there again, I'm just kind of dabbing or pouncing, but I'm keeping the color towards the body of the rose and keeping that dark. Same thing on the other flower. Putting it in the center and then on one side of the body. Now this one I didn't wet first and I actually this is going easier. So you've just got to come play with your environment depending if your, you know, if your weather dries out your paint too quick, you can always put a little water or extender down. So I'm just kind of tapping that in to the petal areas. Get some, create some shadows. And I'll leave that alone. Okay. All right, now um, the next thing I'm going to do is actually I am going to put my leaves in there because uh, they are um, going to have to go underneath these roses a little bit. So I have. You, should, you just need a couple different colors of green. So I have um, leaf green, and I'm gonna add, you know, I can do, I could do yellow in there, I could do, I'm gonna just put some yellow out just in case I want it. I don't know if I'm gonna use it or not. I have primary yellow. Okay, so I have leaf green. Now, to me, that might be a little too dark for what I want, so I'm gonna, I can either take yellow and white in there. Let's try the citron. Let's mix that in there. Let's see how that looks. That's probably more the color I want. Okay, so citron and leaf green. Mix some of that together. Now I want a variety of leaf colors in here. And I'm just going to squish and lift. I'm going to put the dark ones in first. So I've got my number two round. I squish and lift. So I've got a nice point on the outside. And get another one up here. And don't worry if the green leaves are exactly the same as mine on the pattern. You just want a variety of both. You want some that are fatter than others. Okay, let's get... OK, 
okay and down in some of the area I'm gonna have some little fluff too so down in here I'll get my green leaves but these will actually be covered by some little fluffy petals that will be added in there afterwards. And let's see, these are going to be, these are going to be feathers. And I also want to get, let's get some more. And see, I could pull from the inside out also to do those leaves. Other people also, a lot of times for this type of leaf, they like to use a flat brush. That is another option. I'm going to go right over part of the bottom of the flamingo there too. Don't be afraid of that. And let's get one more here. And then I'm going to add some lighter leaves in there too. Okay, so for the lighter leaves, I definitely want to add some white. So let's mix some white into the mixture that I've already got. So I've got the two greens, and it's kind of minty, so I am going to add a little dab of yellow in there. It's just your personal choice. No reason, you know, why you choose one or the other. You just have to like it. You just need a light green and a dark green to do this. Okay, and then I'm going to get some lighter little leaves in here. Try and get a variety of sizes. over the flamingo's neck. And let's see. I've got I've got get some smaller ones in here. And I'm using the paint just a little bit thicker also, just so that it, that it uh, covers good. Just keep adding. You know, you'll just fill in empty areas with these leaves. Maybe another one in here. I know I'm going to have some fluff in there. Um, Let's see, I've got one more coming out here. I think that originally was a darker one, so let me go back and get a little bit darker on as well. Another thing I could have done is I could have double loaded. Um, now, the little leaf right here is going to be going on top of the feathers. I may have to come back and touch that one up afterwards. Okay, so now I've got the base in for my leaves and the, the leaves are really just stylized they're going to be kept very simple okay so now I can go back and I can put the white part in on all of my roses and there again I'm just using my 3 8 inch uh, angle brush and I'm just going to corner load with the white and I have to tell you I do love the DecoArt Traditions uh, white. It's their acrylic line. It's more of a fine art because it has such a beautiful uh, coverage. And so I have a tendency, even if I'm using Americana, I just kind of sneak that one in. Okay, so I want to start with these top petals and I'm just going to add little strokes of white. So pick your brush up as you're doing that. Get a little bit more. A, a lot of times when I'm loading, I'm just going to get a little bead on the outside edge of that brush because I don't necessarily want a ton of paint on there. And then add some little strokes inside. Okay. Little bead on the outside edge of that long corner. Okay, then I want to get this area here and I'm going to finish connecting it to the top of my rose. 
Same on the other side. I'm coming down, I'm pulling the where I left off with that top one. And I'm just gonna give some little ruffles coming down and across inside the row. So it goes from one side to the other. Okay, and I like to have two layers. So what I do is I come start at the top again and I add one more ruffle coming down in. Okay, then I'm going to get all the outer petals. I just get a little bead of white on the outside edge. Okay, and I'm going to get all the tips, kind of pull on the chisel. I'll get the inside ones first. Yeah, actually I'll get the outside ones first. That's easier, otherwise I'm going to mess into my center ones. So just getting some white on the tips of all the petals now. Now I'll do the inner one. And just pull a chisel to connect them into the bottom base of the rose. Just a really simplified little stylized rose. Okay, so I'll get the tips, get the outer petals. A little more paint. Pull the chisel in. Get those. Pull the chisel in. Okay, a little more bead of paint. Let's get the inner petals. Don't worry if your ruffles aren't exactly like mine. Every time I do it, it's slightly different too. So there's your little rose. Okay. Um, same thing for the other rose, but I'm going to stop and clean my brush and get a fresh load. A little bead on the outside edge. Wipe the extra off. I'll start with the inside top, add a couple little strokes, come down, connect, and then I want to connect, so I'll pull that down. Now, depending on the angle, I could do my curves from the bottom up also, and then connect it in. So it just depends on what you're working on. And the direction you like to hold it. Connect that in. Second little row. And then I'll do all my outer petals. And let's go ahead and get the one on the other side. And I could have, in the olden days, I used to do this with a double load of color. Used a little smaller brush. Could even do it with a uh, double load on a round brush. Used to do that too, but this, this is a little easier way to do it. Get some more petals on the other side. Don't forget to pull in the little chiseled, little chiseled line. It helps connect them into the center. Okay, there. Okay, so that's my roses. Then I wanted to add some little fluff, so I'm still just using the same brush loaded with the white, and I'm going to add some little fluffy flowers, just little curves, just a little kind of nondescript just to help fill in. And if you needed to, if you didn't have enough color in there, I could have put a little wash of a darker pink in there. But I'm just adding, it's not even a, a real flower, it's just little white curve to give the impression that there's some lacy little white flowers in there. Now if you didn't have 
I'll get a couple more here too. Okay, now if you didn't have, um, if you if you needed to add some, okay, so like up in here now, I've got white, and of course the white is not going to show on white, so I could take a pale color and do some little ruffles up there as well. So if I take the cactus flower color and and white, and I don't want I don't want it too bold, but see I could add. I could add some more little ruffles in there as well, just to give it the impression that there's more little flowers, you know, or over in any of the other areas as well. Okay, then I've still got my um, detail on my leaves and my little feathers. Let me do my feathers first, I think. Okay, so the feathers I did one with the cactus flower color and I'm using the rake brush. Okay, now I'm gonna give myself a little center line here that I can go on each side. Okay, I'm gonna pull from the outside in and I'm pulling at an angle. So if you need to give yourself a little guideline, you can. You wanna pull it at an angle, not just straight out. Now, their feathers would not stick out like this either. This is just kind of a stylized little painting here. Obviously, they wouldn't have roses for bodies either, so we're just kind of making this up, but they've got beautiful tail feathers. But this is just a little stylized feather to give it some color. And they would actually be thinner than what this is. They wouldn't be this fat. They have long, kind of narrow tail feathers. Okay, so I'm going to do, let's see, oh, I'm going to do coral, I think, for the other one. So let's still using the rake brush. About half paint, half water is a good mixture for using your rake brush. So I've got my center vein, and then I'm going to pull in my feathers. I'm just up on the tips. Okay, and then I'll add um, just a, a little bit of a tint on one side of each of those with the Royal Fuchsia. So I'll thin that down. I'm going to just pull from the from the tips. And I don't need to go all the way to the center. I'm going to stop short just about halfway through. I'll do the same thing on each each feather, just on one side. If you were to get too dark, you could always go back and add some uh, white little feathers in there too. Okay, now, if it's easier to go ahead and use a liner brush, you could, but I go ahead and put this for the center vein, the Royal Fuchsia. I'm just pulling the chisel edge of my rake brush to put that in. And then I've got on my leaves, I, I put some, okay, so now I want to go back, I want to get my color again. So I, I used, for my lighter color, I used the citron green, the leaf green, I mixed those together, and then I added white to that for the lighter green. And if it's too minty, add a little touch of yellow. You just have to like it. I'm going to add a touch of yellow. Okay, so I mix that up. Now I've got to clean my brush. And you probably could find a, you know, a light green color that you like that's already mixed up too. I just kind of use what I've got. So I'm going to corner load that lighter green. And on all of the darker ones, the darker leaves, I'm going to add a center vein and then I'm just going to add this on one side. I'm just kind of pulling some little strokes on one side. Now I think I need that to show up a little more. I'm going to add a little more white, make it paler. I want that to show up just a little more. So we'll let that one dry. Let me do another one. 
try this one over here. And just on one side I pull and I pick it up and I pull and then the center vein. Just just a little, just so you get a little bit. Let's try doing that first and then the center vein. There we go. I like that better. So I did about three strokes. And then a center vein. So just a corner load of that lighter green color. And some chisel edge to do the center vein. Now you could use a liner brush as well. I just wanted to break up that dark green a little bit. And it doesn't matter which side. I'm really not paying attention to light source on this. So whichever side feels more comfortable for you to pull the stroke, that's the one you use. When I first started painting just a few years ago, <laughs> about 40, um, I loved painting flower pots. And it was an inexpensive... Um, surface to practice on when you're first starting and my grandmother always had lots and lots of flowers and uh, she had window seats that were just um, by big picture windows that were just filled with all different flowers so I painted a lot of flower pots for her over the years and it was kind of fun okay now it's up to you whether you want to just leave your um, light ones alone. Uh, if they get too bold, you can always put a little wash of white over them. And in fact, I'll, let me just do that to a couple just to show you. So I would thin down the white and I could just put a little wash right over them to lighten them up. Tone them down just a little bit. Okay. And I've got a couple of, of little marks right there too that I got my hand into. So first I'm just going to tap some white on there. Lighten that up a bit. My little boo-boos. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and I can come back and, and touch in with the other. The, the other thing that I did on the design was I did put little white dots throughout so I used like you can use a stylus you can use the small end of a brush and I dip it and then I do little clusters of white dots and that helps to make it look lacy and definitely you can aim for the areas you maybe you weren't quite happy with always a way to camouflage a little here and there. If, because I've got this so light in there, I might even want to add a few cactus flower dots. So you could add some of those throughout as well. And since I put it in one spot, I want to do more than one spot, so I've got to add you know, a few more here and there just to kind of help balance it out. Get some over here too. Maybe some on this side. Go back, get some more white. I love doing the dots. Sometimes I just don't know when to quit. But they are fun to do. And it helps to kind of tuck the leaves in a little bit. Okay, on your roses, one last thing. Um, if you feel you need to sharpen up any of the ruffles. You certainly can come back with a little liner brush and add a little bit heavier white line, especially on the ruffles in the body of the rose. Get that to sharpen up a little bit more. Sometimes when you're doing a corner load or a float, your color gets thinned and you might have to get a little bit a little bit more on those edges, so totally up to you. I just I don't want it to look like the whole thing is outlined, though. So I would try to only do it on 
the center ones if you can help it. I'll get that down on that first one and then leave it alone. Okay, so now I will just quickly put a little wash of my cactus flower over that area too and come back in and just kind of wash some more white, kind of do it wet on wet so that you camouflage where you need to cover up your boo-boos and I think we're all good. So there we go. All right. Uh, one last thing is uh, the entire background around the flower pot I did stencil as well as on the canvas and the canvas I added glitter to it too but you see the rose stencil now this is a new stencil of mine and um, my roses let me show you the flower pot so on the flower pot I only used the little rose that's on my stencil but on the canvas I used the whole thing. I used the entire design and just kept kind of flipping it around different angles to fit those in. Now in the upper part I used a cactus flower but in the darker area I added some of the fuchsia into my color so that it would show up but I don't want that to jump out. I want my design to be what shows up first. So do it a little bit sparingly. Okay, so with my stencil here, I can choose whether I want the whole thing or just bits and pieces. I think I'll, I'll go ahead and show you the whole thing. And okay, so for the roses, I do need a stencil brush. Um, and I'm going to switch to a brand new clean one because if I use the same black brush that I used earlier, it would um, be too wet and then the paint would sink under. And I just see one more thing I want to kind of touch up here on the head before I go any further. Just want to clean up. It is kind of a flat area here. So don't think that you want to make it a great big round circle because their head is a little flatter there. But it was a little flatter than what I wanted. So just added a few little strokes to cover up my graphite lines there. Okay. All right. So now I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of randomly start putting this on. I'll use my cactus flower color, get it on the brush, but wipe it all off. I want to use it really, really dry and I want to use it really soft. So really get that out of the brush. Barely put little circles and they don't even all have to be exactly the same intensity and when I get close to an area I just try to be careful not to totally get into it but going in circles and I you know I, I do suggest that you tape it down it'll help keep from moving on you yeah, and Get that on there and lift it up and there we go we've got our got our pretty stencil in there I'll do some on the other side too I can use just bits and pieces so if I needed to sneak a, you know little ones in here and there and maybe a little one you know right between the neck I can do that and let's get the other side I just kind of look for you know, probably like that That'll be good. And you'll see, and I'm still working on the same load. I haven't reloaded this. A little goes a long way if you do it right. Okay, there. So I've got the upper half. And then I'm going to get on the bottom half. I'm not going to clean the brush. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that darker pink, but wipe it off on my paper towel. And 
Let's see what way I want it to go. Maybe like this. And then I can have little hints of the darker on the bottom half there. Now you may even want to um, put the, the um, plaid on the bottom. That's another option. This one I'm going to leave just the roses on the bottom. And I'll leave that as is. Okay, so that's my new uh, Jelly Bean Rose stencil that's available on my website, jellybean.net. Uh, all the brushes are available on my website as well, jellybean.net. And let's go ahead and one more time, we're going to get that black stencil up on the top. And because I put my stencil in water, I am going to have to switch to another brush here while I do my black stencil up there. But I love the bold color. So I'm going to add. Now, when you're doing it, it probably is better to start in the middle. Only because um, you've got probably not the exact measurement going across. That way, if it's a half of one on each side, they're closer to the same size. So I'll put it in the middle, load my brush up with lots of black, get it all wiped off on my paper towel, and light touch, and go over circling. Okay, another thing is, because I don't want to get into my roses, the smart thing to do would be to put tape to cover up those bottom stencil areas so that I don't get into my roses. I don't want to overlap into that area. So I'll put tape over that. Keep me out of there. this way and that way, and just nice little circles. Okay, I am going to load it up a little bit. I didn't, I didn't plump this one up quite as much as I normally do, so I needed to cheat and get another load, but really, really wipe that off, and a, a lighter touch when you first start out, because when you first start out, that's when you have the most paint on your brush, and you really want to lighten that up, you know, and as you run out, you might have to push down just a little bit, but still be careful. And it doesn't hurt to just kind of pick it up and peek once in a while to see where you're at. So there, well that looks good. Now, this one, I'm not going to fill in those extra ones like I did for the flower pot. Okay, I'm going to leave those because I like that there. Okay, now I need to do the, the sides. So I'm just going to line up the stripes best I can. And go ahead and get... Get that last little section there on each side. Okay, so see that'll just blend right in. And I'll do the same thing on the other side here. And just kind of match up. And I know I had a piece of tape there, so this is good because now I'm catching that other little boo-boo. Get that in there. And we are all good to go. All right. Let's zoom out a little.
Okay, so here I have my finished little piece. Now one last thing that I did on the canvas. I didn't do it on the flower pot, but I sure could. I decided that all over in the background I wanted the Craft Sprinkles by DecoArt uh, crystal color. It's transparent, so when it dries, it will be transparent. So I'm going to just use my, my big three-quarter inch brush here, my faux squirrel, and I'm going to scoop up generously and pull that. I'm not going to put it in the plaid, but I'm going to put it all over in the flowery area. And then I'm going to have pretty sparkles. And it only sparkles when it hits the light, so you have to kind of tip it different directions. But I, I love glitter. Anybody that knows me knows I love glitter. Every bit, everything a little shiny here and there. And this will dry clear. So pretty. So you, you can put it on heavy because that will just give you more sparkles. So just kind of tip it different directions to see where you, see if you missed any areas. And I'll get a little bit in between the neck there too, just kind of dab it in. But I love these colors. These are just so much my favorite colors. And the flamingo. Love this flamingo. It's just fun. And just use your imagination. This could be done on so many things. And there we go. See, we got nice pretty sparkle. There it is. Now, if you like flamingos like I do, as much as I do, um, another thing that you might be interested in is I do have flamingo wine glasses in pattern packets on my website. And uh, there again, it's going to match in with your picture. A little bit different flowers, but uh, I also have several YouTube videos that show you how to paint on glass. So you'd easily be able to do this if you watch any of those videos. Even if it's not the same design, the technique is the same. So. Okay, so we're all done with our piece, the flamingo flower pot and canvas. And I just want to also give you a couple tips on how to finish the flower pot. When you're working on the clay flower pot, um, in the beginning, I told you you needed to seal it inside, outside, you know, every inch of it. Well, when you finish it, you want to do the same. So if you're going to be using it outside, definitely get yourself a polyurethane uh, that can withstand the weather and uh, spray or brush on. I personally like to use the sprays, but I got to do it when the weather is cooperative and sometimes in Minnesota I gotta wait till uh, spring or summer before I can do that. But uh, you do want to seal the entire thing. If you don't, you run the risk of the water seeping through the clay flower pot um, when you water your flowers and that could cause the paint to come off so seal it really good. If you're going to just be using it inside, I do several coats of the DecoArt uh, sealer finisher and it comes in both a matte or a gloss. Uh, you can use your favorite one whether you want it shiny or not quite so shiny. Of course I love shiny, I've got to have the gloss but um, I'll put several coats on and um, let it cure for several days before I would go ahead and put some dirt in it and plant my flowers in it. But like you can see behind me, um, I have a tendency to not have a green thumb, so all my flower pots have the silk flowers in them. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video lesson. Uh, please visit my website, jillybean.net, and don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be 
sure to know when I do other new videos. Join my email list on my website and I send out occasional uh, little coupons for discounts and and uh, let you know when the new projects are available. So enjoy painting. Thank you so much for joining me.